I'm a fanboy and I don't care. Hi, my name is Sam Johnson and I'm a voice teacher. I'm going to be reacting to and analyzing Under Oath performing A Boy Brushed Red Living in Black and White live. They've done a really clever job so far of when Aaron came in, he, he looked a little bit tired. He plays drums while he sings and he's the music that they write is not easy to sing. He kind of threw that away in that he didn't, I mean, he, he had that call out to the audience of, hey, everybody sing along. And then Spencer came in and he's not playing drums the whole time. So he was able to come in with a little bit more presence, a little more clarity. And they they work together in that. But even then, he, Spencer didn't sing the whole thing. They were most mostly focusing on working the crowd, making sure that everyone was involved. And it actually like helped save their voice for a second longer. I mean, they're not singing the hard stuff that they have to sing for about 10 seconds. He sounds a little bit out of breath, but he still sounds really good. I only hear that he's out of breath between phrases. It's not really making his uh, his vocal production more tired or more compressed. A lot of times if we lose breath between different phrases or different words, it, it ends up that we overcorrect and have a little bit too much tension when we come back in. But he seems like he's finding a pretty nice, easy, balanced place when he's coming in, even though, you know, he's doing a lot of cardio right now. So good. I love that he's able to go between that fry scream and a really healthy, high, like whiny mix belt. It's so cool that he's able to go between them because he's doing it well. I know that he was featured in some of Melissa Cross's DVDs, the, the Zen of Screaming. She's a voice teacher also, and she's brilliant. And she's worked with a lot of heavy metal vocalists and screamers and distortion people. And he is great, and I don't think he's working hard at all. He's cupping his microphone, it's creating a little bit more of an acoustic environment right around the microphone, and then I'm sure that they're adding some different reverbs and things to make it sound bigger than it is, but he's not pushing. He's not gonna blow out his voice singing like that, and going back and forth between that beautiful fry scream and the beautiful emo belt is just so smooth. It doesn't sound like he's working hard in order to achieve them and it's gonna be repeatable. He's gonna be able to do that all day. Just going right from Scream to clean. And he throws it in at like interesting parts of the phrase. It's not that he just starts and then ends it in a different way. He, he might throw a few words of scream right in the middle and have the rest be clean. And he might use it as a way to bridge between volumes. And he's just so creative with how he is using his voice right now. I know this song really well. I haven't seen this performance. I think I went to this tour, but I haven't seen this recording before. And it's not the same as what's on the recording, but it's 
it's really good for what it is right now. And it doesn't need to sound exactly like how he sounds in the recording because he's making something original right now. And to me, that's really valuable. Spencer's amazing. That's cool. I like that he went into that scream also. I don't know how much he screams. I haven't heard him scream very much before, but it sounded easy enough in that when you're in the moment, you can't care about if it's going to like kill you the next day very much. If you're in that space, you're worrying about the wrong things because you're not thinking about how to create the best art and how to make this moment the most authentic. You need to put in the work, the prior work, so that you can have a bunch of options when you go to perform. But the more that you're thinking about trying to do a certain thing, the harder it becomes. So when Aaron screamed at the end of that phrase, I don't really care like how efficient it was because you can get away with doing that a few times a night. He's doing a lot of other things well already. My biggest impression so far is that he just looks tired physically and it's exhausting to play the drums and it can be exhausting to sing sometimes and putting the two together is really, really hard. It's, it's just unbelievable to me people who were able to sing and play drums at the same time, like him and the guy in Death From Above 1979, just like blow my mind, the capabilities of their bodies. And it sounds good all the way through still. There's nothing that's not musical with what they're doing. It might just be a little bit more harsh or a little bit more abrupt and sudden at different parts. It what you say. But he just sounds exactly like how he sounds on the recordings. See, and he's like jumping around while he's screaming because he's not flexing and bearing down and just having to do this intense thing. When he does, it's probably more of an act. He's actually just really agile and able to keep moving around and doing things because it's a consistent stream of air. It's just so predictable and like an easy to produce sound for him. The only thing that I've heard with Spencer is when he does those longer sustains, like beat it, like at the end of it, it gets a little bit more heavy. And I think that it's okay because he then comes in with the really nice balanced scream. And that fry scream is not heavy at all. If you get too much compression, it's going to stop working. And... So, like, he has to go back to this place that works really well for the scream. And I think that that kind of corrects anything with his clean singing that might go a little bit too far in the other direction. And it's still not, like, so far that you it even sounds like it's going to break or that it's any sort of problem. At this point, it could just be a choice that he wants it to sound really, really heavy there. And he knows that he's able to do it. But I, I don't know exactly what's going through his mind. I would have dodged that last note also, because this next part is... Let's go! 
<laughs> yeah, Aaron's getting a little bit heavy and a little bit shouty, where on the recording, it sounds a lot more narrow, a lot more over the top. A lot of times people say they, they were like singing underneath it or singing on top of the pitch. Oh, you have to get on top of the pitch. It sounds like he's not getting on top of the pitch when, when he's singing right now, where he's still getting to the note, but it's tuned in a way because of his wide vowels and heavy, heavy harmonics that it, it just sounds way too heavy. So it, it's technically on pitch, but it sounds a little bit under because only the fundamental and the first harmonic are really getting amplified very much. And we hear that over the top ring when the second and third harmonics start getting rung, at least in this part of his range. So it's just sounding a little bit heavy. He's doing a lot of things to kind of mitigate that by not doing really full holdouts. So when he gets to the end of his phrases, he's not holding notes out as long as he might if he was just singing rather than singing and playing at the same time. Or he's dodging some of the notes, but he's still managing to get through because he's a professional and he knows how to get through a song. Like right there, he just stopped singing. Yeah, I love that. Spencer sounds so good. I actually haven't listened to a lot of their live recordings, but he just sounds so, so good. So what, however their sound guy is doing this along with him, I know it's a combination. It's, it's a mutual effort. And it's obviously mostly on Spencer to be able to have this consistent sound that his sound guy can really manipulate to make it sound exactly like what they need for this situation. But it's it just sounded so easy. And I also loved how between the screams and the cleans, there wasn't a huge change in volume. It didn't go from like a really, really loud scream to only quiet singing or a really, really soft scream to really loud singing. It was pretty consistent between the two. So it didn't throw you off, or at least it didn't throw me off when he decided to go between a clean and a scream and a clean again, all in one flow, because all that's really changing is he's going, okay, nice, nice, good phonation, and then fry, and then nice, good phonation. Air is moving continuously, but it's still good phonation, fry, good phonation. And it's, it's so controlled what he's doing, and it's so repeatable, and they've been touring for so long, and he still sounds great. So awesome work with, his training and with all of the work that he's put in in order to have an instrument that's so predictable for him and in, to know how to play it so well. I'm a fanboy and I don't care. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Go check out my website, vocalease.net, if you're interested in signing up for lessons with me. And go look up Melissa Cross if you're interested in learning more about the pedagogy in teaching screaming and what, what she's into and who she's worked with because it's really interesting if you're into this kind of stuff, just as a voice geek kind of thing, she's kind of on a pedestal. So go check her out and thank you for watching.